Hello Internet World and of course you'll recognise that tune as the Fringe theme tune which you'll never hear again. Oh no, that's a downer. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't started, that's, that's, how sad. We, that's how we're starting this podcast, with a <laughs> negative. Yes. Because um, it means that we can only get better from here, hopefully. Yes. Um, but yes, we're back with a new podcast. It's been a while since we've done a podcast and it's been a while since we've done a post generally yes. on our website. Because you may have noticed that the uh, blog4k.com led you to a blank page. <laughs> uh, good news is, though, after all these issues and trying to fix it, we have got a website going again. Now it's .net because it's just way cooler. And, totally. And I'm sure we'll get .com back at some point as well. But for now, it's blog4k.net. Remember that. And also, we've started a Facebook page, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. So remember to sign up on Facebook. All the updates will go on there. It's facebook.com slash blog 4 k um, and uh, of course these will be featured on youtube these podcasts along with we're trying to get up on itunes eventually and hopefully you can subscribe that way anyway today it's me john Palfrey, joined by lucy smith hello and we're talking about the uh, finale of fringe we are the two episodes one first one called liberty and the second episode enemy of fate so it was sort of a double episode actually it kind of felt like they both linked together but yeah that's what we're talking about today. The end of Fringe as we know it. Yes, it's all over. What do I talk about now? I just... I don't know. I did 20 posts on Fringe. Wow. 20. I counted them. <laughs> 20. You won't be able to have any new ones on there anymore. Crazy. No, I just... Well, unless it's r- reminiscing. Yeah, maybe I'll <laughs> just reminisce. Other, comparing other TV shows to Fringe and seeing how good they are. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, should we start off? Yes. Did you like them? Yes. I yes. think since season three, it was probably the best few episodes there's been. Yes. The last two episodes. The last three, actually, last three. I'd say the last three. Yeah, I think it really went back. I don't know what it was. I think it just went back to the old dynamics of what the show was. What What I felt kind of changed was when um, after uh, Bishop. <laughs> uh, Walter. Walter. Sorry, which one? I was like, which Bishop? <laughs> uh, uh, when Walter, he uh, had that chat with the kid or not chat the mind thing with the kid mm. and he realized everything yeah the plan. yeah he suddenly he he was completely different it's amazing acting how he yes comes across differently but suddenly it was like oh it's the old walter and it's fun and exciting again yeah and the jokes yeah, are yeah. back and it was it's kind of been a bit depressing for the last season and a half almost it has him. been like it's not been him yeah i think because with fringe obviously there were sad points with it throughout all the series mm. you know there's the sad emotional points that really stick with you but then there's always that light-hearted side with Walter. He was the sort of comedy relief. So with the whole Etta dying, and I think from that point, it's sort of kind of... Etta dying was a bit of a climax in many ways, and they sort of just like were sort of going along, trying to avenge her sort of thing, and it felt a bit... That's something that you would do in a full series, not in a short one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's my biggest criticism of this series. It's probably felt like it got rushed a bit at the end. Amazing at the yeah. end, but why didn't they they could have easily done what happened in the last three episodes over the entire series yeah my problem with it the rushing the main problem i've had with season five is that we didn't see enough of this observer led world yeah yeah you know we're the observers through season one to four have been these sort of background enigmas i guess and uh, they've never been really this scary thing not like the Ultraverse people who are like, they've always been no, seen as bad until season three we realise they're mm-hmm. not. But, you know, they've been built up since t- t- practically the start, like as these evil people. But the Observers were kind of just like these, like, kind of symbol of something. So them suddenly being bad just didn't really sit right with me yeah, in many ways. Yeah. If they explained a reason why they were bad, obviously they'd be, uh, they've explained the reason because they've destroyed the planet and everything. But, but you know that. But if they had like a proper bit of an interesting way why they were doing what they were doing rather than just like oh we need a planet you know i think it would have probably sat better with me yeah it was kind of like trying to save humanity from themselves that mm, would have been mm. quite interesting because obviously they know stuff because they're time travelers but yeah it's kind of it's the kind of the strange one is the resistance wasn't that big <laughs> they weren't very resisting i know uh, and it was kind of like <laughs> it was just that okay, one guy th- there's that one guy and a couple of, they have a couple of like rooms and a yeah. down alley somewhere and it's like got some technology 
and then it's the fringe team. If maybe and that's they it. showed other cities, like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the other thing. It's such New York based. Because I was that... watching the season three again recently because mm. I got it on DVD for Christmas, and um, there's an episode where I think it's is it the alt verse or this verse? I think it's this verse where it's all those people. See, it's this verse. I'm pretty sure. I've only just watched them again. But it's all those people joining together, reading that code. Do you remember in season yes, three? Yeah, yeah. And it's from that box and they all like get amnesia. And it showed them all across the world doing this thing. Mm. And if they'd showed that with the resistance, that's, this is my point, it would have just felt a bit more like it's not just all happening in New York. Yeah, because there was a couple of mentions that, oh, over in Paris, I think, isn't it? They said there was another one of these, like what they were building in yeah, uh, yeah. Grand Central, uh, well, not Grand Central, in Central Park. Yeah, yeah. They were like, oh, yeah, it's also happening in Paris. But other we never than, saw that. Other than that, there was no other mention and of like, the rest of the world. Yeah, really. the last few episodes, we went over to 26, whatever mm, it yeah, was. Brief and moments, that was, yeah. I wish we'd seen a bit more of that. Yeah. Because that would have been really interesting to see why the observers were, you know, what the observers have done to make it viable to go back and destroy the past. Because surely, them as time travelers, they shouldn't be messing with the past. Do you know what I mean? Because if yeah. you've watched Back to the Future, don't do it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> bad things happen. So I'm sort of, I'm kind of, there's a lot of plot holes that just don't sit right with me. And I think because it's such a short season, they just haven't had the time to iron out the continuum. Yeah, I mean, my, my my only frustration with the last season is there's, there are probably moments where they did storylines, like with the searching for the different bits of the mm. plan, where you think, did they really need to spend a whole episode looking for yeah. like one random item, which I don't think even got used yeah. in the end. Really. Yeah, so they sort of. And yeah, it could have been better used to explain those kind of bits and like you know have more time for Donald to grow it to like his son. It was sort of like they were trying kind of to stuff. do fringe events, but with coinciding with finding these yeah, pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but then coinciding with finding these pieces had to reflect something of the characters because that's what fringe has always been great with doing. Like, especially in season three, I'm going back mm. to season three again and again. Well, it was I'm peak. watching it again. And it's sort of like all these, especially the first eight episodes in three when Olivia's stuck over there and all these sort of fringe cases loosely translate into what she's going through or what she represents what she's going through. And this season, it didn't really do that no. in many ways. And it felt like the it was just like, oh, the fringe element of it, you know, the weird science, and then the character development was two separate entities and it didn't feel connected in any way. And, and it kind of... <laughs> Yeah, because at the end of the day, they're no longer the fringe team at this point because no. obviously it's destroyed and there's no such thing there's as no being fringe. Yeah, and and that's that's fair enough. But then why were they still doing these kind of almost it were like missions effectively? Yeah, a fringe yeah. missions, and it's kind of either one or the other. Either it should have still there should have still been a team and it carried on, or it should have been no, they're now just fighting for survival and yeah. But saying that, why. the fringe team aspect. The bit in the last episode when they're yes, rescuing yeah. Broyles yeah. and there's, you see all the old fringe events. I fucking love that bit. Yeah. I thought that was really <laughs> Yeah, they nice use all the different see. elements. You're like, yeah. As you read someone online that said, like, yeah, it's like the perfect like combination. Yeah, I know. It was like brilliant. A, like a it was so amazing. It was just things. like, yeah, let's, let's do some fringe events. Let's kick some observer ass. But I think it would have been better if the observers were just this bad guy entity and i think it would be better to go into the moral aspect of it like they did with yeah. the, the people over the other side and in somewhat with the shapeshifters yeah yeah like you know the episode when the shapeshifters in season three and there's that the one who's like been in cover so long he's like got this family and he's become connected mm -hmm. to them and everything and it's so much interesting seeing that side of shapeshifters who are technically robots or whatever they are and i think that made it a bit more interesting and a bit more mature than just bad versus good yeah I, th I think the biggest problem with the um observers was that they were just not they weren't created into a big enough uh like i don't know i can't think of the word and um, why does my sound sound weird hang on testing that's good um start again they didn't so they, yeah i know what you mean I, I was about to say the right word when i when we yeah <laughs> i, I know like, exactly uh, what you mean because like with anything <laughs> Film, game, TV, you need that clear cut. That is your adversary. Yeah, that is the yeah. person who is the bad guy. And the, yeah, they, they weren't really perceived as, as big enough bad guys as they should be. I mean, yes. they're meant to be the worst thing ever. Because but but you know, so far we've known them as just a September, December, yeah. and all them. And, and they're all quite nice. They're quite cuddly, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, and, so and although they were very kind of. Um, they didn't care about people, and they had obviously had no emotion, yeah. which came across quite clearly. There was never a point where you saw them doing necessarily anything evil. 
just uh, doing doing their job, and that that's kind of the questionable thing. Is they like weren't as emo- unemotional as they could have been. Yeah, they, we didn't see them do completely forgive the phrase Nazi like. I mean, that's the, yeah, that's that's the level you needed them. To I be think at. you think <laughs> yeah. I do think you needed that because otherwise you just saw them sort of reading some minds, the loyalists all getting nice cozy homes, and then. It just came across as like a bit like China. <laughs> it felt like <laughs> slightly the, strict, but felt not like the writers terrible. Like we need a bad guy for season five. Who have we got? We've mm. got the observers. Let's suddenly turn them into something. I big. don't know why they couldn't have used someone like the shapeshifters who have revolted or something. That would have been quite interesting. Yeah, and I think because I find shapeshifters creepy. The fact that they've got those machines that. Yeah, and you can't trust who's who, who and they could switch who's. over. Yeah, and exactly. Because you can have someone infiltrate and all mm. that, you know, and there could have been all that kind of element to it. But. Going to, I think there's a lot of plot holes. The biggest one, and I don't know if I can, we can work it out or try and explain it or not. If the right, so Walter is going into the future with the kid Michael before they deserve the they because he is like the ultimate observer, yes, because he's got the perfect um, intelligence and emotions that make him even better than observers because they think they don't need uh, emotions. So Walter goes to the future with this kid to prove to the scientists you don't need to count the emotions, so observers don't exist. So therefore, December, de- September wouldn't exist. So therefore, September wouldn't come back, come and disrupt <laughs> Walter trying to cure P- Peter. Peter would stay alive over this side and over there, so nothing would happen. The whole show would cease <laughs> to exist. So wow. Thought, so <laughs> that's how you destroy Fringe. That's how I destroy go. Fringe. A Fringe is negated now, and I'm just trying to think out. But wow, then yeah, that's, that's that is true. going extreme. But then thinking about it, we got a time reset at the end of season three. Yes. When Peter. So it, if anything, it stopped season four of season six. Season, season one to three stopped existing in season four. But arguably, everything still happened in still Olivia's happened. mind, and everything still happened in in, in mind. well in existence. It happened the, like the observers would have seen yes. everything happen, for example. So I'm just like, and if that's the case, then mind bending. They would have seen just messed up, or I'm seeing something that's not there. And they would have also seen their destruction. They would have seen that at some point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was going to happen, and that. You think be a they, were, they were supposed to be that, that clever to sort of and they, they predict missed, that. Yeah, the, the, actually, that was one problem. They almost lived too much in the now when they were when in season and five. You know, we completely forgot to mention Peter was an observer for like three episodes. Yeah, that was How, weird. That what was, was that quite about? important, but then it suddenly wasn't important, and I'm sort of trying to understand why they, no why, side why effects, they did and I that. Think I think it was kind of an important for character development. Because I mean, it was a shock at the time. It, yeah, because it showed the. Olivia's way of reacting to Edward's mm. death and Peter's and Olivia coming to save the day as per usual. But I think it could have been really interesting to get to a bit of more of an insight into the Observer because we did a little bit like how they worked and how they calculated and how they saw things. Yeah. But we didn't really see anything else that could have helped us understand the Observers or defeat the Observers or yeah. get their That, that would have been useful motives. to see something on those lines that he maybe learned something while he was there or... But yeah. it was, g- and also, and also, something that they brought up in the last episode was how they were born and how they're developed. Yeah. And they they were like grown in these like test tubes, basically. Yeah. And their brains were developed there. There was no technology at that point. No, I guess the technology was added later, wasn't it? Yeah, but then they claimed that uh, in the episode where they that Peter put his the yeah. thing in his head, that all of their intelligence came from that thing. But then. They took out September's in, um, technology and he became a normal bloke. Yeah. So is it DNA or is it technology or is it a bit of both? Yeah, there's there's a bit of confusion there when it came to... They didn't really... It suggested in the in the last few episodes that that, that they grew their brains like that yeah. through the technology of, you know... Um, but then... Because they changed the gland yeah. that made them more clever. Which is fair enough, that the makes emotion. sense. But then, then you wouldn't need the technology bit in the back of the head if that's the case. I think the technology bit is the bit that helps them pass through time. And, you know, when Peter was an observer and you could see, like, he had that weird vision. I think yeah, that's yeah. part of it because that's why Peter could suddenly um, sort of flip between places, but also he still had that bit of emotion in him deep down because mm. his brain was trying to block the emotion because of the pain from Etta dying. So I guess that sort of explains it, sort of. 
But there's a lot of moments like that in the last... I mean, you kind of forgive it, I guess, in early series because we never went to that extreme level of mm. importance. You know, it's always been like, oh, well, yeah, it's not, yeah, it doesn't was, matter if it's not They didn't really kind of mess up with the continuity making... Oh, there wasn't as many plot holes, but there's a lot of dropped plots. One yeah, of the biggest yeah. ones I am still very bitter about is Olivia's evil, stalked stepdad. I wish we had seen that more. Do you remember in season one, she gets a card from her stepdad every year. She says, I get a card from my stepdad because he knows... Because oh. in the original timeline oh, yeah, before yeah. she season four, mm. she got she was like, I had the chance to kill him, but I didn't. But she did in season four, didn't she? Yeah. Because she told Bolivia. But we in season one, I was think expecting her stepdad to crop up or be it Mr. X or something. God forbid that would have been. Well, that's the other thing. What happened to Mr. X? <laughs> yeah, I think that, <laughs> that was that, that was really exciting. Ex- when when I, they had that, it's like, oh, this is gonna be exciting. Yeah, that. That um, was like an amazing plot point. That was those two I'm really bitter mm, about. Mm. Because Mr. X could have turned out to be a stepdad or something, and that would have been incredible. Yeah. Oh. I'm no. confused. And it was never c- specifically answered, oh, that bloke was Mr. X, because we know Olivia was shot at the end of season four mm. by Walter. But then if it was Walter was Mr. X, or William Bell was Mr. X, we would have known straight yeah, away yeah, so i'm really yeah. like i'm missing something here <laughs> i've yeah. not watched it well enough <laughs> yeah. i'm a bad fan <laughs> you know but let's talk about some positive yeah ones, yeah you know. it sounds like we're really ripping apart yeah actually, I, no, it, was I, a good episode. it was a good episode <laughs> and one of my favorite parts was actually the first episode of the double part yeah it's the episode liberty where olivia the badass returns i may add um when she kind of does the whole incredible taking lots of cortexafan, mm-hmm. going as high as a kite and going across over there. And I just loved that whole bit. Yeah, it was a really well done sequence. Because I, mean, I think they were felt I think the writers felt pressured to include somewhat the over there. Yeah. Because they really loved over there so much and rightly so. But it didn't feel like they forced it in. It felt like it was a viable plan to go over there, you know. Yeah, it's jump a across, good idea. go underneath, yeah. grab it, come back. And so I thought that was a brilliant sequence and that was the most tense, interesting part when, you know, Olivia's trying to keep it together when she's all drugged up and trying to keep which uh, side she's on because the like, reserve kept flitting it out and I just thought it was brilliant that bit absolutely fantastic that that was really well done that section and in some ways you wish there was more of it because mm. it was so good and yeah you almost you almost think why didn't the other side help <laughs> well they <laughs> like, sort of did. provide weapons or something yeah you give know? me a gun come on <laughs> you know, there must be something <laughs> they can give a hand with a bit more but yeah, yeah. I think that yeah, bring the army across or something I don't know <laughs> yeah but that was really nice to see, just to see Bolivia for like five minutes. Yeah, was yeah. Lovely. And uh, I thought, you know, Olivia being the centre of the heroics again was nice to see. And and to see the and to see the fringe division as well, mm. because I think one of the missing parts of season five was the fact there was no fringe division working. No, it was the resistance. But and like we said, they it made weren't anything. In some ways, made the the cast too small. Yeah, because there was quite a bit bigger the cast really. You, yeah, you had your main group, which you know we have all the time. But then on outside of that, got loads of the, extras. And all the, all, all the yeah, like supporting actors were quite good, and they were quite yeah. added oh, to something Charlie. to it. Yeah, like Charlie, for example. I never get over Charlie's death. Yeah, <laughs> and going back Charlie. to Olivia, <laughs> Olivia the badass. Um, in the second episode, when she killed Winmark, that was just brilliant. I think nobody else should have killed him except mm. for Olivia. Like when he beats up Olivia and she's there down and out you think and she sees Etta's bullet and she gets pissed and she's like no I'm not having any of this and kind of cuts out the power completely not the wormhole thing or the magnets yeah that's true well done Olivia (laughs) not ruining the plot (laughs) but let's not talk about any more plot holes and just squashing in with the car was brilliant even though violent it was brilliant (laughs) yeah (laughs) that that. was kind of a nice satisfying ending yeah it was fantastic because it easily um uh, someone like Michael could have done it. He could have probably yeah, killed. Yeah, I was. Th- I, was ex- I was expecting. I was half that, yeah. expecting that actually when to they were sort, sort of having that yeah. brain battle. I guess I thought he might do something, but yeah, that was a more kind of satisfying way to mm-hmm. <laughs> kill off a main character. Yeah, well, I think the writers said. I think I think it was at Comic Con or somewhere in an interview I read that there was going to be by the time of the end of season five, we would have seen the entire theme of Fringe, which we haven't been really shown before. And I think it is the theme of fatherhood. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. Like so fatherhood versus being a patriarch, which is an evil dad, e.g. Walton, and family and the importance of that and stuff like that, which I think is very, very good. I think it's a good thing to have. It's 
be male oriented if I could say so anything about it like men playing God Belly versus Walter you know the whole sort of religious aspect in many ways I guess you can take it in many ways but I think yeah that's the main theme of Fringe if anything yeah yeah I think I think there was a it, it, well, it certainly came across in the last few episodes because that's what yeah. they said. It? It's all about the father son thing with yeah, the, and and the last couple of um, and with September in the, the little the kid last as couple well. of chats as well with between them were great. Mm. I mean, Gene the cow. I mean, oh, that, that was a great brilliant. last bit, wasn't it? With yeah. Astrid and all that, and finally he says, "Oh, it's a really nice name." Yeah, like, it was nice, to Astrid. And that was a really yeah. nice way to end it. Astrid and Broyles, the other type people who are sort of forgotten in the fringe yeah, team, getting yeah. a bit of due. You know, Broyles was brilliant. And, you know, we, he was like, the feeling's mutual. <laughs> you know, he's so cool. I've always loved Boyle's, actually. He's been a, such a great character. And that's the character. shame about, that was the only shame about season five, not seeing him more, really. Yeah, yeah. to see him more. I thought he was just, especially in season three, I went back to season three forevermore, because I'm just watching it again. It's fresh in my mind. But Boyle's in season three as well is really good. Like, with the whole alt Boyle's being, looking after yeah. Olivia, and then with him coming back, and him being, and... It makes me think way back to season one when he didn't even like Olivia. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, mean, yeah. Jesus. It's I mean, amazing how far we've come. It's, it's interesting how that's kind of started then. Because it was, it was very much like, a, oh, yeah, bring you in. Mm. Don't mess up. Yeah, I, d- da, I da, 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 like I'm your you. boss kind of thing. Yeah. And she obviously worked with uh, the FBI team at yeah. the time. You know, that's yeah. what it was, effectively. And then suddenly it yeah, turned into this uh, main team. I think Boris has been a very constant, well-developed character. I think he's always been a great character to olivia and to the team actually i think him and olivia's dynamic it's been really interesting i can't really, you can't really label it it's not like a father daughter thing no it's just brother, sister it literally thing. is just a it's boss it's just a boss <laughs> and colleague thing but they've got this level of respect and trust of each other yeah yeah that is really nice to see it's nothing else to do with her being a woman anymore him being a man or anything like that it's just them respecting each other's abilities so i should think it's a great thing to see yeah yeah it's great on that one yeah and I think um, Peter's development. Let's talk about Peter for season five. Because we've mentioned him briefly with the whole Observer Tech. I just feel like Pete, they were trying to push him too much for being a main character, which he isn't in many ways. He's more of a character. Him and Walter tend to be more of a character in their own. Yeah, I guess true, actually. Obviously, yeah. they are separate characters. I'm not dissing them in any way, but... Uh, that it's sort of like they've pushed Peter to be the hero almost. And I'm like, no, no, they no. They keep no. trying that way. It's with him. Olivia. And I'm not sure if that really it's works. It's always when been it Olivia. Does. It's Olivia is the hero. She is the main character. This is Olivia's show. Like we knew that's from the pilot. That's how it was set up. That this is Olivia's this is Olivia's story. She is the person looking in on these fringe events. She's the link to the audience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there, there was there was moments where once again, well, when he had the thing in the back of his head, mm. um, and even in the last episode, there's it a just few felt bits like where the he, he it was it kind of. It felt season five that Olivia was just coming around cleaning up and his mess up. She a lot of the time, the there were so many sense. episodes where you didn't really see her for a lot of the episodes. No, no, and, and, and she, she did a, a couple of like I'm being really smart, and they'd be like, "Yeah, Olivia, you're awesome," and she shot a couple of observers and stuff like that, and she did some really cool things, but just nothing really felt because the thing with. Olivia, she's always been empathetic. That's the right word. She says that right at the beginning. I'm, I've got empathy. I, I, I care with my things. And that's what makes her such a great character. She is so good at her job. Mm. And we never doubt that. Because it's easy to doubt that, isn't it? It's easy to... Sorry, my phone was ringing. I d- <laughs> it's easy to... D- you know, in some shows you watch and you think... Oh, you're being, you being—you made an awful decision. That's not mm, the thing mm. to do, Olivia. We never thought, we never think that. Even when she's over there and she's a bit messed up, we're still on her side. Well, she, yeah. You know, when she's still doubting herself, like mentally, like with all and with all the Texas fans stuff in season two, we believe Olivia can do the job, and she always can. So, I don't know why she felt it felt like she was such a backseat character in season five. Well, they literally. Backseated her, didn't they? Yeah, <laughs> and I think she should have been a mate. She should, if in anything, be even more of a character because of Edda. But for some reason, they made this sort of whole father daughter thing, which the I think yeah. is a bit unrealistic because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not going to sound like stereotypical, but the mothers and daughters have a bond that fathers and daughters never will. Yeah, it's and they sort of explored it a little bit, but not as well as they should have. Yeah, it was, c- it was still kind of. They did give it enough respect, I thought. They, yeah, she, she, I don't know, too many times in season five she just came in as a support. Yeah. 
actor effectively yeah and you know, she was relegated to below even astrid in some cases yeah. in some episodes in some moments and you're thinking hang on mm. when she's on the same level and thinking and it's a waste that seems like yeah i yeah. think also Wait, who, you know it has character for example it has always been Olivia's show I th- all through the seasons it has especially season three i think that's the most personal season for mm-hmm. her with the whole bolivia thing that was definitely her season you know that was definitely her season and rightly so because that's season. but then that's because it was so awesome that was why it was so good because like I was saying, Olivia was really pushed to the point of, can I actually do my job anymore from what Olivia's done to me? She's been living in my house. She's met up my relationship with Peter. Can I actually carry on and do this anymore? And she's doubting herself, her abilities. Not, and that's something you've never had for the first two seasons. So, in some way, in some way, season four was uh, Peter's season. Yes. Season five, I would say, was Walter's. Yes. Season. Yeah, I think so. I think Walter's. Maybe maybe that's where they wanted to change it. Maybe they thought, well, you know, Olivia's had she had one, two, and three. Effectively. Well, I do think Walter very much three. is very much very important in the. Sh- I'm not saying he's not important in the show because he, the show wouldn't happen if it wasn't for Walter because he made the other side. He is the scientist in a science spy show. But I think it changed, didn't it? Because I think in the first four seasons, yeah, he was kind of. Yeah, he had created all of this, but he was still only supporting Olivia mm. and then a bit of Peter. I think so. And then in season five, it seemed to be much really his show with everyone else supporting him yes. to do what he had to do. Yeah, to because save the world. I do think season five, Walter was paying penance for his sins, wasn't he? Or mm-hmm. well, everything he's done with the whole going back and getting, saving Peter, which I don't know why people are still having a go at that. That's a, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's like yeah. F- fine it ruined a universe but everything's okay <laughs> now you know they they bridged that stuff you know and i think it was very religious on his his sort of viewpoint and i think he had to feel like he had to make amends for what he did all those years ago and that's why he went off with michael you know he went through the universe to save a boy and now he's going off with a boy to save the universe again so it's sort of quite a nice book ended thing for walter i think it was a nice touch with the um uh the flower as well at the end on the bit of paper yeah yeah it i think that was a bit to the fans as yeah, well especially, wasn't it? especially after the bit before like when they had the conversation and he's like yeah. what are you talking about what, well, he saw the what video, letter, what yeah. letter and then yeah. the next I day that he sees scene the was really nice but so he realizes that uh, way around that's, that's my pro- i think the whole timeline reset thing i've never liked them no because cheating isn't it really it's cheating <laughs> i really think it's cheating and i don't why sci- don't know why sci-fi's do it you know lost did it yeah um Fringe has done it twice now, for Christ's sake. You <laughs> know, I just, know, I just think it's cheating. It's, well, actually, no, it didn't reset season four. It kind of just jumped into another one without Peter, didn't it? Yeah. Nothing changed, really. But I just felt like all the development, everything these characters have gone through in season five, everything we've gone through in season five is now negated. It window, it's, yeah. not, it's pointless. And I'm mean, there like, well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, season five episodes, was arguably pointless because you know, they've just gone back to where they were at in the season four. You know, I think they should have if anything, carried on without Etta, despite Etta being dead, and just, you know, being happy, even though, you know, because even though Etta's dead and it's sad and it's awful, she would do it again. Etta would die again for her cause. Olivia would die for the cause. Both of them, I know, 100% they would die for the cause. So why... It just feels a bit like a waste of time, (laughs) (laughs) you know. And yeah, it's just, it's, it just, yeah, it's lazy writing. I dare say it. It is lazy writing because happy endings are all good, well and good. But if they're expensive of the story, what's the point? I'm going back to Lost because a lot of people are making a lot of um, comparisons with Lost because they're similar shows in many ways, both JJ shows. But Lost, the thing put the Lost, the problem was it didn't answer any questions. Yeah. Fringe has answered questions. and But they got a happy ending in, in Lost, air quotes, because they all died. But then everybody dies, you could argue. So, you know, they got a happy ending, which is nice, but not in expense of the story. Fringe, they got a happy ending when maybe... They should have gone on with a new happy ending, if you know what I mean. Like yeah, a, yeah, like so rather because you know with films you have your equilibrium. And then you have your perhaps I don't know. They maybe should have had a new one. Maybe the observers would learn emotions or something like that. that yeah, been, that could have been because then yeah. arguably that's better than killing off thousands of people in a future it just, race. It just <laughs> seems like TV shows fall down at the last minute. They it's either like happy ending or sad ending. There's no middle ground. Cause like let's go to a film like Looper. Yeah, that is a technically a happy ending even though the main character is dead. Spoiler alert. 
Hmm. But <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> sorry, it, <laughs> very spoiler. It. I'm so sorry. Film. But <laughs> still you know, it. even though it's a, you would argue that it's a sad ending. Yep. He's dead. It's sad, but he saved this little boy from destroying the future. So it's a good ending. Yeah. You know, it's either one or the other. You have the happy ending with the skipping in the field, literally, with your little kid that didn't die in the end. These others didn't come. Or if they had a sad ending, I guess you could argue they would have killed off Walter or Olivia. You yeah, know, someone yeah, like that. That would be classed as a sad ending. And I kind of... I don't know well, how I react if they killed off Olivia. I would have probably hated them for eternity but it's it's an ending that makes sense to the story they're saying do you know what i mean i think this whole tied up with a bow ending is kind of too placating the audience and i don't well, like that yeah because they've gone i mean presuming imagine if there was a season six okay so let's presume that you know this isn't this isn't the end this isn't the end this is just the end of season six and then actually fox next year would be like yeah you know what we've got really bad ratings so let's let's bring back a tv show what should we bring back fringe yeah <laughs> and in the process <laughs> i doubt that's gonna happen <laughs> but let's say they did that and uh they brought back fringe i mean they would be basically continuing season four wouldn't they yeah and they would be there minus walter which obviously would make it not very good although probably what would happen is they'd uh, do something to get but walter there would back. still be fringe events but yeah that's, that's my that's where we get yeah. to my point was that there was yeah there'd still be fringe events so she goes back to work and Peter Guest goes back to work and they try and figure out fringe events minus Walter now. Mm. So they now can't figure out all these fringe events. Because most of the time these fringe events were people doing them. Yeah, not and they were just uh, they weren't result of to well the science. It was just people messing around yeah, with science. And, wasn't com- it? and completely unrelated to um the observers and all that. Nothing to do with any of them. So that does create some odd situations when it comes to um and on the other thing, actually, yeah. <laughs> Sorry to go off point here. Season, uh, um, the old universe still has the fringe division. Why? I thought the whole point of the fringe division there was to stop the universe falling apart. They were seen as heroes, weren't they? Yeah. For the Amber. Because of Peter sacrificing himself, that meant the universe was now safe and they weren't falling apart. Why do they still have a team of people 30 odd years later still? Well, they still had the fringe division in season four. But then they closed the bridge, didn't they? So, it arguably, you would end Fringe Division. I guess they must still be <laughs> doing stuff like FBI. Yeah, because they, they still, they still <laughs> had the, they, te- they had they the they had the technology events, to find Olivia when she was anomaly. There must be like a safeguard thing. Because you remember when Olivia Perhaps, first yeah. came through, and they're like oh, anomaly, and Olivia, they're like, "Yo, dudes." Yeah, <laughs> you know, but there you go. hug myself. <laughs> 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 that was many thought when I saw that. I was like, "Hang on, wouldn't they just like I not guess bother they having must, that anymore?" They but must be like the FBI said. or something like that. They must be just because they did discover they did like d- event um, investigate the Candyman in season three, which yeah, was so not I guess really they, a fringe yeah, event. So it already was, but it was like it was like a traditional fringe event. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that, that makes a very good thought. point, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I I think overall though. What do you think? Season five. Season five and Fringe in general. Let's let's. Fringe in general. This yeah, I love it. Obviously, I I think the main core that makes it what I love about it. It's not really about the story. It's about the acting. Yeah. Because there's been a lot of stumbles and a lot of you know things that could have been done better. But what shows can be done better? But the thing that's been constant is the characterization and the acting, and you cannot fault that. And it's just a shame at this point. Nobody's won any Emmys or anything which they yeah, rightly deserve. Yeah, which is just the way things are with sci-fi. People just hate it for some reason. But I think it's one of my favourite shows ever. And there's probably going to be more after. The, you know, I've recently got addicted to Homeland, which is just brilliant. That is um, <laughs> we <won't laughs> That's give, another we'll podcast. We won't, but we won't give the any thing with well Fringe, <laughs> which in many ways I like it better than Homeland, is that it's got heart. You know, mm-hmm. even though Fringe stumbled and fell, you know, it, it was ambitious. But even though, and it was ambitious with its storylines, it was very ambitious. It did stuff in five seasons, which you'd have to do in about ten. But even though it was ambitious, it it had heart. In I what agree. It was I, d- to do. I don't think like Carrie or um or anyone else on Fringe. I don't think I'd care as much as the Fringe. Yeah. I don't Fringe in Homeland. I don't think I'd care as much as the characters in Fringe in the same way. Yeah, because I think in Fringe, because um, in Homeland, the characters are flawed. 
Yeah, to I mean, a sense applaud. that you get annoyed by them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in, she's quite in, annoying. So <laughs> it's like r- running into like, no, what are you doing, Carrie? Oh. Stop it! Yeah, but stop being an idiot. in 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 Fringe, even though they do make mistakes and they do have bad things happen to them, at the end of the day, you still love them. Yeah, they're not doing stupid mistakes when they did stuff, so, which was kind of nice. Yeah, and I I sort of read this on a IGN post. And I think it sums up Fringe. Um, Fringe may have had its failings, but lack of impact certainly isn't one of them. Which yeah. I think sums up perfectly, doesn't it? You know, even though there's stuff that they could have done differently, season four was arguably a huge mistake, and the writers have admitted that. There were still points in that, and the whole deleting Peter at the end of season three was mind blowing. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can get away with this in any other TV show except for sci-fi, and I, th- but and I think it's very sad, not just for the Fringe ending, because obviously I'm very sad of Fringe ending. But I'm also kind of, it's bittersweet because it got a nice ending in it wrapped up. But I do think there's a big gap for sci-fi now. Yeah, I mean, that is the concern. I mean... People are sort of saying it's fringe the end of sci-fi on telly. And arguably, there's so many sci-fi shows coming out and getting axed. And then there was like ones that are sort of sci-fi, like um, some superhero ones, which are getting axed as well. So what's left? Yeah, because I mean... If you compare comedy, fringe, if you bad compare, comedy, if you compare, f- <laughs> if you compare <laughs> fringe to, well, well, compare fringe to other sci-fi programs, it's miles better than anything else. Yeah, I mean, people that's the are thing, saying it's, it's the best sci-fi since like Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, I mean there really is no X-Files. other. Battlestar Galactica is an incredibly epic. Yeah, show. and, and it for is, uh, many ways very different. You know, it's this huge humanity sort of thing. But for a relatively small show to to last to I'm last to that and, and be on that level that's quite it's impressive just, and it's just sad that how TV critics and uh, people like in the awards and stuff resign the fact that it's sci-fi they just wipe it off and I'm sort of like are you <laughs> watching this o- only drama can win only <laughs> drama and comedy can yeah, win yeah, you know, can that's win why awards. You know, Homeland is winning so well because it's sort of but how is Homeland different to Fringe at the end of the day yeah yeah They've got these events that are happening and it's reactions mm. to it. And I just, I guess because Homeland is dealing with the tricky stuff and it is. It tricky does, stuff it and because it's American patriotic and yeah, all that. And it, it does yeah. delve into the tricky questions that people are scared to ask. And Fringe is very much, you could argue, oh, it's complete fantasy. It doesn't relate to real life in any way. And so I guess that's why Homeland's winning that's That said though, sci-fi always relates to society. That's, exactly. that's the whole point. If you but look they, close they, enough, they, they use as a, they, they use it as an external um, viewpoint rather than looking at yourself. They yeah. re- they do they do this basically what's happening in yeah, the they real world. Society, yeah. But they reflect the best society ones do. In, in they in always a, have. Like look at Blade Runner for Christ's sake. Yeah. And you know, there's loads there's loads of sci fi that didn't think that do that. And that's what they do. That's that's the point of sci fi in many ways. Yeah. Um, it sort of but even takes you but out because of your life. because they have monsters and because they have flares, <laughs> 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 they're not taken seriously. <laughs> effectively, yeah. Look, it's like look at Star Trek. It's one of the most successful TV yeah, shows of yeah. all time, and obviously with new JJ is now on it with the new one coming out soon. It's sort of like people are maybe starting to yeah. It's nice that attention. people are taking serious of that one for once. But maybe in general, it's not going to win Oscars though. If anything, true, it'll win best of special effects and best score and stuff, and people don't care about that, which is a shame. They don't care about this to the storyline, which is good. Well, probably look good. at the Oscars this year. What isn't it? Lincoln. Yeah, I think it's going to wipe Zero out. Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah. Um, Les Mis. Yeah. Uh, a few others I can't remember, but you know they're all like these serious shows that take everything seriously. Les Mis is just depressing. <laughs> Zero Dark Thirty <laughs> is controversial and hard hitting, and Lincoln's all about patrioticness, you know, patrioticness, and, patrioticness yeah, yeah. and Spielberg. Yeah. Just flexing his biceps and stuff but well, there you go <laughs> there we go <laughs> that's the flaws of the uh, award system <laughs> yeah <laughs> listen to us award system we'll start our own award yeah, the blog 4k yeah. awards there you go we'll, we'll there you give go. true awards <laughs> yeah <laughs> to maybe that's something that really to do the next couple of years yeah that shows that really do deserve recognition but then you know you go to award ceremonies like the people's choice and they're just a joke. <laughs> yeah, true. Because it's people, the people who are crazy enough to vote 1,200 times <laughs> yeah. like on Twitter is the ones that are winning. That's that's the ones that, like, loose win wins. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like, really? Seriously? Best, like, daytime show ever? Yeah. Well, best, no, best, best factual show, I think, it won. Like, factual? It, yeah, it beat, like, Top Gear. It's like, come on, Top Gear's winning. Well, fa- Top Gear's scripted. Yeah, but still, I mean, still, but yeah, then, that's still We're talking about the, the flaws level. of award systems. They I are think completely flawed. I think the award system is just 
flawed. But I think, but then saying that if the show gets fans like as dedicated to the Fringe fans, I've got to give huge props to the Fringe fans because if it wasn't for Fringe, we wouldn't have a season five. Yeah, I mean, that's that Twitter campaign I mean, that, alone uh, saved that, that's season quite amazing five. With, um, it was incredible how every a, week a I network. used to watch it every week, like Clockwork, and now for the episode in America, it something they used to have the special hashtags and it would always trend globally and that is incredible and people paying attention to fringe it's like they they were starting and i think it's because of fringe nielsen ratings are starting to get ignored and twitter is getting involved in that yeah i mean (laughs) (laughs) there's 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 a whole other discussion about whether nelson ratings are are reliable anymore i mean no (laughs) i mean there's so many factors now and and also it's such a old system to take a sample of people and guess what they think they're yeah. watching i mean yeah nowadays with the in, you know we're so used to youtube and knowing the exact number yeah and the place the person lives yeah yeah <laughs> and know, how they watched it yeah on how the they iPad watched it and, and you know, what, at what point they turned off and all yeah. that so all these facts and you look at tv now and it does look a bit old i do think tv when it comes needs to a bit of a kind of revamp and i hope it not and it's not going to come in a cost of its shows. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the only concern because at the end of the day, the money's still in TV and yes. the advertising revenue is still in TV. Yeah. And as much as we like the idea of people like Netflix creating shows, which is going to be interesting. Yeah, the that new one yeah. by Fincher, House uh, of Cards. Yeah, we'll have to chat about that. that. Um, that'll be really interesting to see how it can be done on web only because that is quite impressive. Yeah, uh, Amazon are developing a TV show yeah. about Zombieland. Amazon. Yeah, I know. So I guess it's free love film, but so Amazon. Exactly. Yeah. So this is sell books. <laughs> this is this is an interesting time in terms of how it's moving to the internet. But I hope at it's not the same time, expense of the show. Yeah. Hopefully they but don't become really low. You know, with House of Cards, really Finch is involved. It's going to be good, and it's yeah. you know, and hopefully it is, and hopefully that'll and inspire a lot more. Uh, shows to be made by Netflix. Yeah, so I like think that. Fringe is not just the show. I think it's what it represents, and this is dedicated fans who are really awesome people, yeah. and showing that if you really want a show to survive, you can freaking make it happen. And let's just get rid of some shit shows that's still on. Excuse my language. <laughs> but yeah, save some money elsewhere, and let's yeah. get some good shows on. TV. It's just daylight robbery that Glee's still on. Fringe is gone. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> on that note <laughs> on that note so yes it's been a it's a sad moment as Fringe ends 100 episodes exactly wasn't it ended yes. on. yeah which is quite a nice round That's number nice to end, round on, number, yeah. gonna end I'm on I'm sure number. we're going to probably mention Fringe and maybe do a past look at some episodes yeah. I definitely will be going to some Fringe revisits and looking at some old episodes mainly season 3 because it's amazing but I'm probably going to watch them all again because they're coming to Netflix soon that's good, yeah. So, yeah, if you if you haven't seen, I mean, maybe you watch, listen to this. We've just why spoiled it all why you you've just listened to this? I don't know, but say you haven't lis- uh, yeah, watched watch any of Fringe, then watch it from the start. Yeah, that's the other thing. Watch it from the start, otherwise it won't make sense if you start at season two or three. Four yeah, it's or nearly two years anniversary, and I first started watching Fringe in February. You know, well, there that's you a little go. fact for wow. you. <laughs> I remember the date; it was something like the eighteenth of February. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that's dedication. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, yeah, certainly watch it all because it's certainly worth watching the yeah. entire um, series from start to finish because as it builds up and like I say, it goes through season three and everything, it is pretty incredible. Yeah, season and three, I just, I can't explain it's how not, good it is. Like I say, it's not something you don't want to just jump into It's movie quality, three. that yeah. stuff, like the plateau, the episode. Yeah, you say the, fir- the first oh. the first 10, 15 episodes, isn't it? It's just one after the other. It's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You no, watch seriously, it again. plateau episode, I think it's one of the best ones ever. It's the one with the guy who can control, he's killing people through controlling events do you remember that oh guy? yeah oh yeah oh yeah that was brilliant that yeah. episode yeah, is just incredibly future, done yeah. in every element and obviously the first episode of season three olivia is just brilliant so yeah oh, definitely definitely watch that um if you haven't seen it already but why you'd have listened to an hour of podcasts and then done that i don't know yeah you maybe wanted to um before we go off we got to talk about the future of what we're going to watch on telly for log 4k because obviously fringes now gone. what am i going to talk about now i've read somewhere there's that new channel 4 show called utopia it's yes apparently very, very good. good yes i haven't seen so it maybe i'm going to start watching that Same and here. start blogging about that i think when season three of homeland comes out we've got to start talking about that yeah but we'll, we'll probably it. do a b- podcast of b- homeland before we start season three in september so talk about homeland because homeland's great and if anybody's got any other tv shows recommending well yeah send we're... them my way because i'm i've got a big hole yeah, please send, hole. please send your stuff to blog4k.net uh, now. Yeah. So make sure you go there. Dot net. Interact with our, also interact with our Facebook page, add comments onto there, wherever, even on our YouTube channel. 
just add yep. comments. Twitter, Twitter is probably the quickest way. Twitter, if you want to get in touch yeah. with us and let us know what you think you sh- we should be watching. And also, if you just want to chat about anything we've been discussing in any yeah. of these shows as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, in terms of other content that we'll be doing, we're, we're going to try and really increase the media content that we do. Not just written stuff, but we'll hopefully do a lot more videos as we're yeah. building a studio for other projects right now. And hopefully we'll be able to use that, do stuff in here in our studio and do some really good stuff that we can record as podcasts, but also as videos. Um, one of those videos that hopefully I'll be starting soon is a like Netflix kind of random show Oh, that'll be good. Thing. So I'm going to watch, watch completely random, random films. I've got to figure out how to make it completely random. I think we'll do like a random number generator and just go press the button so many yeah. times and see where it lands. And I'm going to just watch, if, if it's a film, I'll watch the film. If it's an episode, I'll just, or if it's a TV series, I'll watch the first episode. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll see what happens. You I might accidentally watching. stumble on something amazing. Exactly. And we'll see what happens. And, and then I'll try and get people to send in their opinions on what they, if they've seen it themselves, because yeah. it's all on Netflix. So you should be that's able to access it. That's the great thing it. about Netflix. There's so much random stuff on yeah. there you'd never watch. So and uh, I, I've watched some new TV series that I probably wouldn't have even been aware of mm. if it wasn't for that Netflix. One of the ones I have been watching recently is Sons of Anarchy, and that mm. is very good. Yeah. Um, so it's worth watching if you haven't seen that one. Yeah, I need to start watching The Walking Dead. That's probably the yeah, one next on one my on list. Actually, yeah. Um, so I'm probably going to start that one next and probably start writing about that if it's good enough. It, I've heard it's very good. So. Yeah. So make sure that you keep following us. Make sure you subscribe to all the possible places you can subscribe to us. Make sure you like us. Yes. Make like sure us. you follow us. Follow us. Make sure you stalk us. Make stalk sure you do us. absolutely everything you can <laughs> to know everything about us. <laughs> yeah, I'd love no. to hear some, some people and their fringe opinions because I love it. But yeah, this has been another blog 4K. Did we, did we call this the forecast in the we end? We did call we it did. the it's forecast. It's the forecast and I forgot this is about that. our fourth that. one, I'm Yeah, our fourth sure. forecast. So fourth forecast. Thank you for listening to the forecast on blog4k.net. Say thank you to the makers of Fringe for making it. Yes, I agree with that. Thank you to the makers Cast of Fringe as well. Because uh, it's been great five seasons of uh, stuff to watch. Yep. And let's hope that there's going to be some new interesting things that they'll be making over there in the new future. Yep. Maybe the same crew. Maybe the same, the same actors, actually. Interesting to see where they go. Yes. I think if it'll be like a shame if they and don't. Stuff. Yeah, I agree. think... And, and, um, yeah, I think they've got a lot of potential to go into big places Hollywood and beyond yeah so we'll see what happens there yeah anyway thank you for listening I've been Jonathan Palfrey I've been Lucy Smith and we'll listen we'll speak to you next time (laughs) bye